The integrated illness scripts really have not been developed for any specific stage learner. So if you think about an early learner, the scripts can be valuable to introduce students to just the underlying basic science that explains uh, a clinical condition. First year medical student working through a problem-based learning case, um, the scripts provide a really nice foundation for that student to understand the underlying basic science causal mechanisms that lead um, to a feature of that, that disease or that clinical condition. If you think about um, a more senior medical student, you know, perhaps a student in their, their third or fourth year on clerkships or other kinds of clinical rotations, they can use it as a quick reference guide to go back and be reminded of, oh, okay, yeah, right, these are the, the underlying causal mechanisms that explain the findings of a, of a given condition. Third year versus first and second year of medical school, at least for us, um, you're making this big transition from academic studying to clinical and in-person studying. And so being able to take um, what I learned in the basic sciences and actually apply it effectively was much more successful as a result of this project. Um, it also um, helped me with regards to the epidemiology uh, perform on my OSCEs. Um, for example, um, we have this tendency after we learn things uh, first and second year to look for zebras, um, as we call them, or they're very rare conditions, or we get really honed in on a symptom that's really cool. But what Aquifer helped me to do is realize that it's not necessarily about that, it's about what is actually the most common thing, the most likely, and then picking things based on that. I would use integrated illness scripts as an educator uh, to help explain to a student um, a patient that they're seeing. And so I think particularly if you're doing a compare and contrast approach and you have two patients with competing diagnoses, you can use the integrated illness scripts to say, okay, so this is what this disease typically looks like, this is what this disease typically looks like, and then bring out the key components of, you know, who is this patient? How do they present with respect to time and what are the key symptoms that somebody with this disease would typically show up with? And then go beyond that from just the, and this is what they look like, and this is why you know, a patient with a pulmonary embolism might have hemoptysis, and this is why a patient with a pulmonary embolism feels short of breath, and this is why a patient with congestive heart failure feels short of breath, and look, they're two very different mechanisms. Even with the legacy cases, I am not a big fan of solely self-directed learning with any of our products. I think that the magic in all of them is around discussion. So I think that weaving them into case management conferences where you're asking students to create differential diagnoses, and then not just prioritize their differential around clinical features, but finding those magic pivot points, those cognitive pivot points, where basic science helps you differentiate between groups of diagnoses or, or perhaps confirm a final diagnosis. Through this past year as being involved in the Aquifer Sciences Initiative building the scripts, it's really been remarkable. We really feel that um, just by building the scripts, sort of our knowledge base, even as clinicians and basic scientists, has also dramatically improved. Um, the other thing is, we find ourselves using the scripts more and more in our daily teaching as well as, uh, as, as clinical practice. Aquifer Sciences isn't just a product. Aquifer Sciences is an approach, it's a pedagogy, and I think most importantly, it's a way of thinking clinically that we hope is gonna help our students and our faculty ultimately provide the best possible care for patients.